What's up guys, this is Brad at Hourglass Fab and on today's video, I'm gonna show you how to powder coat at home. I'll tell you what you need, I'll show you how to do it and we'll put another skill in your toolbox. Let's get into it. So when it comes to working in your home shop, maybe you're working on a project, maybe that's made out of aluminum, steel, or stainless steel, or something. Maybe it's corrosion resistant, maybe it's aluminum, and it won't really do anything except for develop an oxide layer. But if you're working with mild steel and that steel can rust, then you're going to want to put a protective coating on it. Now back in the day, I used to use a rattle can and I just up whatever I needed to make sure it wasn't going to rust. That wasn't a very good solution. Some people are really good with spray paint. I'm not one of them. Then you can also have the paint you mix up and you actually shoot it out of a gun. I've done a couple of things like that. It's a long process and for little parts, it's really not worth it. Finally, something that you can do in your garage is powder coat. Now, the only things that I will tell you right now about powder coat is one, it's really messy. Two, you need to wear a respirator. We're gonna go over everything that you're gonna need to get started in this. And I'll give you guys a couple of pro tips that I've learned after powder coating probably 1,000, 2,000 parts over the last year and a half or so. So, the most important thing you're going to need is a powder coating gun and a power supply. That's where this comes in handy. This is a powder coating gun and power supply from Eastwood. Now, I'm not looking to get super fancy. I'm not looking to build a huge oven. I don't want to powder coat your wheels on your car. Powder coat. This powder here is bought from prismaticpowders.com. They offer quality, consistent powder, and it's the only place that I'll buy my stuff from. You're also going to need a regulator. Now, you can have a regulator on your gun, or you can have a regulator on your compressor. Now besides the regulator, what you're gonna need is a air water filter. So you can filter out that moisture that's gonna be in your lines from just building up inside of the tank sitting there. That is important. Moisture being in your air line is going to affect things a lot worse than you think, especially when it comes to powder coating. If you have moisture in your line and that moisture hits that really, really fine powder, it's going to alter it. It's going to make it heavier. It's going to make it lay on extremely inconsistent, and it's not going to deliver a good finish in the end. We're also going to need some type of air. You can use a very small air compressor because powder coating does not take a lot of air to do. You're going to need somewhere to powder coat, and I don't advise just powder coating out in the middle of your garage and letting everything float into the air and fall on the floor. It's really Really dirty process. So what I do, since I'm not powder coating all the time and it's here and there, is I make a big Tupperware container powder coating booth. I cut a hole in the back side of it. I throw an AC filter on the back, good old duct tape, stick that on, and then I put a box fan in the back. That's going to pull all the air through that booth and it's going to pull all of that fine powder out of the air into that filter and out of your lungs. This isn't going to replace a respirator, so don't think it will. All right guys, so besides the powder coating gun, the power supply, the powder, the regulator, the air water separation device, the air compressor, and the powder coating booth, you're also going to need an oven, okay? Whether that's an easy bake oven that you got at the dollar store. Just kidding. It needs to at least be able to get up to 400, maybe 450 degrees. So one thing that you can do that's a really easy fix is using a toaster oven from Walmart, from Target. Just a good sized pizza toaster oven that's gonna get up to those temperatures. The only downfall about using an oven like this is you're not gonna be able to put a lot into it. <laughs>
powder coating is material prep. Before powder or anything is going to stick to what you need it to stick to, it needs to be clean, it needs to be oil free, and it just needs to have a nice prep to it before anything else. So this piece is a laser cut mild steel plate. Now it has a little bit of rust on it, there's a little bit of water spotting, there's not too much dross or anything on it, so it's pretty close, but we need to hit it with a DA real quick and acetone wipe it before we do anything else. So something as simple as using a DA or an orbital sander to put a finish on a part before you powder coat it works just as well as sandblasting. Now for flat parts or anything easy to get to, a DA works fine. Just cleaning the part and making sure it's oil free, grease free, rust free and it has a good finish for the powder coat to actually stick to is key. Now if you have tube frames or motorcycle frames, obviously if you're at a production place getting that frame powder coated they would sandblast the entire thing before they shoot it and that's just how they operate. But you can definitely get by if you just put a nice finish on your part and it's clean. Now after you DA it or sand it down or just put a nice universal finish on it, hit it with some acetone. So after you get done DAing your part, making sure it's a nice universal finish, you knock off any dross or anything on your part, deburr it, make sure it's nice and clean. You'll get some acetone on a rag and you'll wipe your part down. Now be sure to wear some acetone resistant gloves, uh, acetone super aggressive on the skin, and make sure you get everything as good as you can. You don't want to leave any oil, fingerprints or anything on it if you want it to come out nice. Alright, so after you've prepped your part and it's DA'd and acetone wiped, if you don't have a DA or an orbital sander, I recommend just going and picking up a DeWalt orbital sander from Home Depot. Um, they're reasonably affordable and they give the almost the exact same finish appearance as an actual dual action sander. So when you're looking at your powder coating gun and you're wanting to set it up, one of the most important things is how much powder you put in the hopper. Now you're going to want a quarter to a fifth full. If you start getting up into the halfway range or anywhere above that, you're going to have some major powder issues and nothing is going to work right for you. Make sure you have a regulator as well as an inline water separator that's going to be important. You don't want any fluid or any type of liquid in your line to come in contact with any of the fine powder in this gun. Now you're going to have a switch these either come in finger switches or foot pedals, it just depends on what powder coating gun that you go with. Basically you have to hold this down the entire time and that's actually going to complete the circuit and make the entire process work. If you're not holding this down, the current's not flowing through the part, your powder is no longer statically charged and it's not going to stick to what you're shooting it at. You're also going to have this little alligator clamp. And basically, when you're hanging apart from something, it's going to be hanging from metal. Maybe it's a metal rod or it's hanging from a hook. And that's going to be connected to a rod. And you're going to want this little alligator clip connected to the rod or directly to your part if that's possible. And that's what's going to actually complete the connection. Now when you get into this dual voltage powder coating gun, um, the power supply is going to be dual voltage. And you're going to have an option for one or an option for two. Now if you flip this over to your option for one, that's going to be for your smaller parts, your thin sheet metal brackets, things like that. And then the setting for number two is going to be for your larger panel, stuff that's going to cover a larger area and it's going to need a little bit more power. Alright guys, so after your part is all DA'd and wiped down with acetone, and your powder coating gun's hopper is filled with powder at least a quarter to a fifth of the way full, what you're going to want to do is take your part find a good spot to hang it from, whether that's a hole in the part or whether you have to wrap some wire around an inconspicuous area. Get your part on a hanger nice and secure. You can move it around and it's not going to just fall off. And you're going to hang that in your booth. Now what I'm using for a booth is a Rubbermaid tub that I cut the back out of. I put an AC filter in the back and then a box fan behind that. And what that does is it pulls and cycles air through that entire thing and it keeps all those small little particles out of the air and into the filter. And that's what you want because this is a super dirty process. Now once your part is hung up in there, you're going to need to hang your part from something. And the easiest way that I've found is using three-quarter square tubing, drilling a couple of holes in it, 
tack welding some quarter 20 nuts on and then just using some threaded eyelets that are quarter 20. You screw all those in there. You have five, six different places to hang small parts from. You're gonna want a good connection, so if there's any mill scale on it from being hot rolled steel, etc., you're gonna wanna grind all that off and make sure it's bright, shiny metal. So now that your part's clean, your powder coating gun's hopper is full of powder, your air compressor is charged up and ready to go, and you have something to spray in. You can use this idea if you want. I think it's a very good idea. It keeps everything nice and clean. Make sure you have something solid and strong to hang your parts from, and make sure that alligator clip from your power supply is attached to that, or none of this is gonna work. So before you start shooting, you wanna make sure you do have a regulator attached and you want your PSI to run about 15 to 20. That's all you're gonna need. If you run anything more than that, there's just gonna be powder bellowing out of the end of your powder coating gun. It's gonna be hitting the bottom of whatever you're shooting in. It's just a huge waste. Way too much powder will be put on your part and then you start introducing little particles and stuff that are imperfections after you actually bake the part. So 15 to 20 PSI, a really light mist as you're shooting. And that's all you're gonna wanna do. Now when you're shooting your part, you don't wanna just sit there and just cover it in powder, just sit there in the exact same spot. You wanna move back and forth, rotate your shoulder, move your body, and really try and cover that part with your gun. All right guys, so one tip I can give you is you need to be really consistent when laying down your powder. So you need to move that gun around like we talked about and really try and get even amount of powder across the entire face of your part. One way to check that after you're done is by using a high powered LED flashlight, shining it into your part. And if you have a reflection coming back at you through the powder coat, you have a light spot and you need to fix that. All right guys, so after you get your part out of the powder coating booth and you've checked it with the light to ensure that you have a nice even coat of powder coat on your part on both sides, on the edges and everything looks good, now it's time to throw it in the oven. Now most powders are going to bake at 400 degrees for 20 minutes. That's 400 degrees for 20 minutes after your part starts to wet out. What wet out means is it looks like it's melting or it looks like it's wet on the surface. You're gonna start your timer as soon as you see that occur and you're gonna go for about 20 minutes until it's cured. So let's go ahead and throw this part in the oven. Couple of pro tips guys when it comes to powder coating. Number one, you are going to want everything to be extremely clean. No grease, no oil. Acetone wipe all your parts, DA them or apply some type of Scotch-Brite or something to get a nice universal finish. And then acetone wipe all your parts. Try not to touch them, any grease or anything that's left on there. Powder coat will look like it's stuck to it, but as soon as you cook it, there will be an extremely large imperfection wherever that oil or grease stain was. Number two. Get creative when you're actually hanging your parts. Don't just hang it from the most obvious area that you possibly can, because remember, you have to hang these parts and sometimes powder is not going to cover exactly wherever you're hanging the part from. So make it inconspicuous and hang the part from a place where you're not gonna be able to see it. Number three, be gentle when you're walking around with your parts. Any bumping of the parts, any dropping of the parts obviously, is going to knock powder off. And maybe you don't even notice when you go by and your hand hits the thing and your part smacks and poof, knocks a whole bunch of powder off. But you're gonna notice it after your part's cured and you pull it out of the oven. All right guys, so after you have cooked your part for 20 minutes in the oven at 400 degrees after it had wet it out, you're gonna take your part out, let it cool, and then check it out. I mean, it's a fantastic finish. It's extremely scratch resistant. It's very professional. It looks a lot better than most paint cans or amateur paint jobs would look, and it's super easy. So if you guys wanna get a good finish like this at home on your parts that you're making, follow my simple steps. Listen to the couple of pro tips that I mentioned there. If you guys like this video, hit that like button, guys. If you wanna subscribe and just learn tips and tricks about stuff like this and welding, follow my channel. I think you'll enjoy it. Other than that, thank you guys for watching another video. And we'll see you next time.